Are you wondering what general liability insurance is and why it may be needed for your business? Are you confused by what is and what is not covered by general liability insurance, sometimes called GL insurance? Are you trying to figure out the difference between general liability and business liability insurance in a BOP policy? Business insurance can be complex and confusing. In this video, I'm going to explain what general liability insurance is and what it's not coming right up. Hi, I'm Gordon Coyle, and before I jump right into explaining general liability insurance, can I ask you to do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button? That'll help signal to YouTube that this is good content, and it'll help me grow my channel. Thanks. Okay, general liability insurance. Sometimes it's called business liability. Sometimes it's called comprehensive general liability. Other times it's called commercial general liability, and sometimes it's called GL for short. Whatever phrase it goes by is inconsequential for the moment. General liability insurance is a form of business insurance intended to protect your company from lawsuits and other claims which may arise from three key areas, bodily injury, property damage, and lastly, advertising or personal injury. I'll explain that in a moment, but first I want to explain that the most common manner in which general liability insurance is provided to small businesses is through a business owner's policy, which is commonly called a BOP or a BOP policy. And you can see more about BOP policies here in this video. In a nutshell, a BOP policy combines general liability insurance with property insurance to form a package policy, and it adds a bunch of extra fringe coverages that are most commonly needed by a business owner. Okay, so back to why businesses need general liability insurance. Businesses never intend to have accidents or intend to have someone get injured, but accidents do happen and the consequences of accidents can have a significant impact on your business in the form of lawsuits. The more serious someone's injuries are or the more people that are injured in a common accident, the greater the dollar amount of that lawsuit may be for those injuries. And general liability insurance is intended to pay for the legal and court costs to defend you if you are sued and to pay the settlements if you lose that lawsuit. Here are some common exposures and claims that business owners face demonstrating the need for liability protection. The first area is premises and operations liability. If you own a premises such as an office, a retail shop, or a service business, and someone enters your premises and slips or trips and falls, and they sustain an injury, they can sue you for their injuries and for their pain and suffering, and this is where it gets expensive. It's important to point out that a feature in the general liability policy called medical payments or med pay can step in to pay for or reimburse that injured party for their medical bills, not for pain and suffering claims without the injured party having to sue you for their injuries. This is usually limited to 10, 15 or $20,000 depending on the policy form. The second area I want to cover is operations liability. I just discussed premises claims such as slips and falls. But what about operations liability, such as a contractor who may drop a hammer on a construction site and hit another subcontractor, injuring them? That is an example of op the operations portion of a liability policy and is covered as well for the medical bills incurred, the pain and suffering, and the legal cost to settle a claim of this nature. The next section is products and completed operations liability. Here, if you make or produce a product or just sell products, there is the potential that your product could cause harm or injury to the user of that product. Product liability lawsuits can arise from faulty products which cause injury or consumable products which harm somebody. These types of claims are also covered under the general liability policy. Completed operations liability goes back to the conversation around contractors. When a contractor completes a job, there can be damages that arise from the work performed. An easy example is that a window is not fastened to a structure properly and falls out after the job is done and it injures a pedestrian on a sidewalk. This is a form of completed operations liability also covered by the general liability policy. The last section I wanna go over is advertising and personal injury. This is often the most confusing part of a general liability policy because it doesn't involve bodily injury or property damage. Instead, it involves claims arising from libel, slander, false arrest, copyright infringement, use of another person's advertising ideas, 
and invasion of privacy. These sorts of claims could be their own video since they're pretty complex issues. If you have specific questions on advertising and personal injury, contact me and let's chat about it. Okay, so that's what is covered. What's not covered? If there are specific policies designed to protect a firm from specific hazards or claims, it's generally not gonna be covered under the general liability policy. And here are a few examples. The first one is auto liability. While you can often include hired and non-owned auto in a BOP policies liability section, owned autos are excluded from the general liability policy. The next one, employer's liability. This is a section in the worker's comp policy and is not covered under the GL policy. Next up, employment practice liability. This is a policy that covers claims alleging wrongful employment acts such as harassment, discrimination, wrongful termination, and these kinds of claims are strictly excluded under the GL policy. Next is bodily injury or property damages you intend to cause or expect to happen excluded. DNO claims, again, a DNO or directors and officers liability policy is suited to pick up claims which allege wrongful acts in the management of a company but are excluded under the general liability policy. Next one is pollution. If you have a claim resulting from pollution, it's generally going to be excluded under the GL policy. The next one I want to talk about is product recall. And this is a big one for manufacturers and distributors. If your product causes an injury or harm to a third party, such as customer, those claims are going to be covered. But the consequential claim or the cost to recall that potentially dangerous product from the marketplace is not covered under the general liability policy. Some package policies will provide a sublimit for that exposure, but generally speaking, you need to have a separate policy for product recall, and those costs can get pretty substantial. So I recommend it for, for distributors and manufacturers. Then there are specific policy exclusions that are added to the standard policy form that you need to watch out for. And many of these do not occur in, regularly on BOP policies, but more often on liability policies purchased in the non-standard or excess and surplus lines marketplace. Here are just a few common exclusions to watch out for. The first one is a designated premises endorsement. This exclusionary form limits coverage just to the premises listed in the policy. The next one is designated operations endorsement. And like the designated premises exclusion, this limits the policy to the scope of coverage just of the operations described in this endorsement. In the contracting and construction industries, there are dozens of possible exclusions and limitations to watch out for and to understand before making a purchase. In New York, the most frequent exclusion is for what are known as action over claims. I did a video on that, which you can see here. The most critical part of any business insurance policy, including general liability insurance, is you, the buyer. And what I mean by that is you should read your policy to understand what is and what is not covered. I know, it's super boring. So instead, it makes sense to ask your agent to go through it with you. Now, I'm not suggesting having the policy read to you like a bedtime story, but instead a high-level overview of some of the points I just mentioned here. The more educated and informed you are about what is and what's not covered, the better decisions you can make down the road. One last thing before I finish up on the topic of general liability insurance. I mentioned earlier that no business intends on having accidents or situations where someone or multiple people are injured, but accidents do happen, making the need for insurance important. But general liability insurance has its limitations. Typically, you purchase limits of a million or two million per occurrence, which may be insufficient in the event of a serious claim. And that's why I recommend business owners consider purchasing excess liability or umbrella liability coverage in addition to their general liability insurance. An umbrella will provide extra coverage over and above your general liability and other liability policies if scheduled properly. It's economical and effective to provide high level of protection for you and your business. All right, that wraps up the discussion on general liability insurance. I hope you found that helpful. If you have specific questions or issues I didn't address here, then you can either post them in the, in the chat below or we can set up some time to talk about it. My contact info is coming right up and there's a link in the to my calendar in the description box below where you can schedule time to chat. And if you're looking for help with your business insurance, I hope you'll consider speaking to me about that as well. We represent most of the top rated insurers, 
and I'd love an opportunity to work with you. Thanks.